In this video lecture, we're going to discuss uh, entropy calculation and we're going to come up with a with a formula that is going to give us a quantitative value, value for measuring the disorder of a system. And that formula is this over here where delta S is the change in disorder or change in entropy of the system. Q is the energy or DQ is the change in energy of the system. And DQ could have a positive value which means that energy is being added to the system and DQ could also have a negative value which means energy is being removed from the system. So, so the amount of energy that is being added or removed in the system at a constant temperature which should be in Kelvins, that would give you a measure of the change in entropy of a system. And in exactly a similar way, uh, uh, taking DQ as positive is going to give a delta S which is going to be positive which means that there's going to be a gain of entropy. So whenever energy is being added to a system, there's going to be a gain of disorder. And similarly, if DQ is taken as negative, that would give us uh, the value of delta is, is going to come out to be negative. That means there's going to be a loss of entropy. And uh, so whenever energy is being removed from a system, there's going to be a loss of entropy. And based on this uh, formula that we've come up over here, uh, the unit for entropy change are going to be uh, DQ is energy and energy is taken in joules. And remember that uh, in a lot of other uh, uh, other units, other, other uh, functions like enthalpy, the units are kilojoules. But for entropy or entropy change, the units are generally taken as joules. And for temperature, the unit is taken as Kelvin. So, so the unit for entropy change is going to be it's going to be joules per Kelvin. And if we are talking about standard entropy, that would mean that you're basically calculating entropy change under standard conditions, which means that uh, you 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 have room temperature 25 degrees centigrade, one atmosphere pressure, and uh, uh, if there's a solution, the concentration is going to be one mole per dmq. So, so if the measurement is being uh, for entropy change are being carried out under standard conditions, uh, the additional uh, unit that you're going to use is uh, going to be per mole because standard uh, standard entropy changes are for one mole. So, so you're going to add this mole per mole uh, unit as well. So generally the unit for entropy is going to be joules per Kelvin and if you're talking about standard entropy then you're going to add per mole as well. But now briefly try to explain what this formula means. DQ is the energy that is being added uh, to a system at a constant temperature. So, so we're going to think about energy that is being added to a system and whenever we add energy to a system and we're talking about chemical reactions etc. So whenever we add energy to a system that energy is used in two things. One is that it goes towards its kinetic energy and if uh, the average kinetic energy of a particle increases, so does its temperature. So the average kinetic energy of, um, of a system is basically its temperature. So energy could go towards increasing the kinetic energy or energy could be used to, to overcome the intermolecular forces or the bonds that are connecting and connecting all the particles together. This would increase spacing and it is this thing over here that that basically increases entropy. So if particles become more spaced out and they become more uh, widely spread, that would increase entropy, that would increase disorder. So if energy is being used to increase intermolecular forces and that would happen at constant temperature, if the temperature is kept constant, no energy is being given to the kinetic energy of the particle, but instead that energy is being used in overcoming the intermolecular forces or the spacing of the particles, the particles are going to be more widely spread out and if they are more widely spread out that means they are more disordered and the entropy would increase. So as an example I have this boiling example of what is boiling and remember boiling occurs at constant temperature. So all the energy that is being provided when a substance uh, like water is boiling, none of the energy is going towards increasing the kinetic energy, the temperature remains constant. But all the energy is being uh, uh, provided to and it's, it's being used up in overcoming the intermolecular forces. So the particles are becoming more widely spread out. So particles in gaseous state, uh, if uh, these water molecules are boiling, they would become more widely spread out and disorder would increase because energy would be more widely and more randomly distributed. So this is what's happening when boiling is occurring. So entropy or energy is only uh, sent towards increasing entropy if temperature remains constant. So the formula which is entropy change is that you're providing if you provide energy to a substance at a constant temperature 
then all that energy is being used uh, to overcome the intermolecular forces and to increase entropy. So this is the this is the energy that is being used in increasing the entropy or decreasing the entropy of the system depending on what the sign of energy is whether it's positive or whether it's negative now i'm going to use this formula and uh, do an example in which i i have ice and i have one kg of ice and i'm i'm melting it and i'm getting one kg of water so i'm going to try and figure out what is the entropy change when i do that so the first thing i need to calculate when uh, when I need to find uh, using the formula that is given above, the first thing that I need to find out is dQ. Now, now dQ is the energy that would be added that ice is going to absorb from the environment, and that is going to melt it into water. So, uh, if you look at the two images, you would know that entropy is increasing. So, delta S is going to be positive. Energy would be added to ice to melt it. So we, got to f we, we will try and find dq first and uh, to find dq um, it's the energy that is being added so that is going to be the latent heat of fusion of ice uh, so it's going to be the mass of ice which is m multiplied by the latent heat of fusion of ice so that's lf so we can uh, calculate that we can easily find that out uh, we also need to find the temperature at, at which this is happening and remember that melting occurs at a constant temperature so the melting point of ice is 0 degree centigrade so we need to convert that into Kelvin so that would be equal to 273 Kelvin so that is 0 degree centigrade so I'm going to just put that in the formula which is uh, delta s the entropy change and remember it's going to be positive because heat is being added to the system so it's going to be mass of ice into the latent heat of fusion of ice divided by 273 Kelvins and uh, the mass of ice is given as 1 kg so that is 1 kilogram and the latent heat of fusion of ice for 1 kilogram is is 334880 joules per kg so that is the latent heat of fusion of ice for 1 kilogram of ice and I'm going to divide that by 273 Kelvins. And you can simplify the units. You can you would figure out that uh, this unit for kg is going to get cancelled out. So it's going to be 334880 joules divided by 273 Kelvins. And the answer that I'm going to get is if I do the division on a calculator and the value you can double check at your end as well. The value that I'm going to get is 1227 joules per Kelvin and remember this is not standard entropy so we're not doing this for one mole so it's just joule per joules per Kelvin so this is how you're going to use the formula to figure out the entropy change uh, that is occurring at constant temperature uh, when ice melts one kg of ice melts and produces one kg of water